Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at the study by Loftus and Palmer 1974 um, on eyewitness testimony. Background. Memory involves processing what is seen or heard by recording parts of an event and then reconstructing these parts into memories when needed. This idea suggests that recall can be distorted or biased by certain features of a situation. Therefore, this conveys that eyewitness testimony is unreliable because it can be influenced by subsequent information, um, which is the information received after the event. The study by Loftus and Palmer, 1974, focuses, focuses on the effects of leading questions on an individual's ability to accurately remember events. And a leading question is a question um, which, by its formal content, um, influences the answer which should be given or suggests the answer which should be given. So before I move on, um, you should note that this study was done in two experiments. So for experiment one, the research method um, that was used was a laboratory experiment, um, which used an independent measures design. The independent variable was the wording of a critical question which was placed in a questionnaire. In experiment one, the 45 participants were asked the, the leading question about how fast were the cars going when they dot 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 into each other. The gap here was replaced with one of five uh, verbs depending on which condition the participant was assigned to. Um, and these five verbs were hit, smashed, collided, contacted and bumped. Please note that they do vary in strength and this was uh, designed to try to <clears throat> manipulate the answer that would be given. So for smashed they expected a higher speed estimate to be given compared to perhaps hit or bumped which are relatively low in strength. The dependent variable in this experiment was the estimated speed given by the participant. Uh, so the research method for experiment 2, a lab experiment was used uh, which used an independent measures design. So this was exactly the same as the one that was used in experiment 1. The independent variable was the wording of a question in a questionnaire. One group was asked about how fast were the cars going when they smashed into each other. The second group was asked about how fast were the cars going when they hit each other. And the third group was not asked about the speed of the vehicle and thus acted as a control group. Uh, now is a chance to test your knowledge if you want to uh, with a couple of questions. Question 1, what research method was used in both experiment 1 and 2? And the question 2, what research design was used in both experiments? So just give these questions a go and go back to the previous slide and see if you are right or wrong. Procedure for experiment 1. 45 college student uh, participants were divided into 5 groups with 9 participants in each group. All of the participants were shown the same 7 film clips of traffic accidents which were originally made as part of a drive, uh, driver safety film. After each of the seven film clips, the participants were given a questionnaire uh, which asked them to describe the accidents and then answer a series of questions. There was one leading question in the questionnaire which was about how fast were the cars going when they dot 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 into each other as I just went through on the previous slide. Depending on which condition the participants were, were in, one of five verbs from smashed, hit, collided, contacted and bumped were used. The procedure for experiment two. In this experiment, 150 college student participants were divided into three groups of 50 participants. All of the participants were shown a one minute film clip which contained a four second multiple car crash. They were then presented with a questionnaire which asked them to describe the accident and answer a series of questions about it. There was a critical question about speed. One group was asked about how fast were the cars going when they smashed into each other. The second group was asked about how fast were the cars going when they hit each other and the third group was not asked about the speed of the vehicle and thus acted as a control group. And again I went through this on a previous slide so this should just be a reminder to you. One week later, without seeing the one minute film clip again, uh, the participants completed another questionnaire about the accident. This contained the critical question, did you see any broken glass? There had been no broken glass in the original film clip. Uh, so again, here's another chance to test your knowledge uh, with two simple questions. Outline the procedure used in experiment 1 and outline the procedure used in experiment 2 of this study. Um, again, just go back to the previous slide and um, see if you're right or wrong once you've answered these. <coughs> Key findings for experiment 1. 
The table below shows the mean speed estimate for the responses to each of the five verbs used in the leading questions. Um, it's important that you remember perhaps the highest and the lowest, so smashed, which was 40.5, but do note that in my textbook it actually does say 40.8, so I'm not sure which one is right, uh, but I used 40.8 in the exam, and for contacted, 31.8 uh, miles per hour. Smashed, uh, produced the highest and contacted the lowest as we just went through. For the four stage films uh, where speed was known, the film of a car crash at 20 miles per hour was estimated to be 37.7 miles per hour. The film of car crash at 30 miles per hour was estimated to be 36.2 miles per hour. And the films of car crashes at 40 miles per hour were estimated to be 39.7 miles per hour and 36.1 miles per hour. So as you can see, people are pretty bad at estimating the speed of vehicles, particularly when the speeds are low at perhaps 20, and they give an estimate of about double that. Um, key findings for experiment 2. The table below shows the speed estimates for the verbs used in the question about the speed of the vehicles. Um, so as you can see, when the, the, when the smashed verb was used, the mean speed estimate was 10.46, and when the verb hit was used in the leading question, um, the mean speed estimate was 8 miles per hour. And again, smashed produced the highest, and hit produced the lowest in this case. Um, the responses to the question, did you see any broken glass, are shown in the table below. And once again, this is quite important to remember, and you'll probably need to use it in your exam uh, if you do get questions about Loftus and Palmer. So response, um, which was yes or no. Um, for the smash condition, 16 said they did see broken glass, but 34 said they didn't. For the hit condition, 7 said they did see broken glass, and 43 said they didn't. And for the control group, um, who were not asked about the speed of the vehicle, um, 6 said yes, and 44 said no. So as you can see, between the hit and the control control conditions, if I can pronounce my words, um, they were quite similar, and there's only one more person that said yes in the hit condition. Whereas in the smash condition, uh, there were significantly more people that said yes. So this indicates that the strength of the verb did actually increase the amount of people that believe they've seen broken glass in the accident. More participants in the smash condition than either the hit or control groups reported seeing broken glass. The majority of participants in each group correctly recalled that they had not seen any broken glass. Conclusions. The verb used in a question influences a participant's response, i.e. the way that the question is phrased influences the answer given, as we just saw in the experiments. People are not very good at judging um, the speed of vehicles. Misleading post-event information can distort an individual's memory. And that's basically all of the conclusions that you need to know from this experiment. Uh, so once again, you can test your knowledge. Um, if you have read about Grant et al, now is a good time to answer these questions. Um, so question one, outline one way in which the study by Loftus and Palmer 1974 is similar to the study conducted by Grant et al 1998 uh, for free marks. And question two, outline one way in which the study by Loftus and Palmer 1974 is different from the study conducted by Grant et al 1998, uh, also for free marks. Uh, these are questions are typically what you'll see on the Psychological Themes for Core Studies paper, so it's good practice for you if you want to have a go. Um, but now we are at the end of this presentation, so thank you for watching, and please do check out um, my other videos. Thank you.